Salut, je m'appelle Sarah Swaidan, euh, je suis une développeuse front-end et je suis du Liban. My first introduction to the web and like HTML in particular, the coding language was in eighth grade. We took a course in school. Uh, my teacher said he wanted to teach us HTML and he started writing HTML tags and P tags and stuff. And as soon as I saw them, they, s they felt very familiar. I always say that it's kind of like when Harry Potter knew that he could uh, speak the parcel tongue. I got a book about HTML and I learned all the basic tags and I created two dif three different websites. And then a year and a half after college, I didn't know what to do for a living. Uh, I didn't want to become a teacher. Most girls usually teach after school if they don't know what, if they're not sure what they want to do for a living. I didn't want to do that. So one of my best friends, who is also a web designer and a developer, uh, one day I was telling him that I was completely torn. I didn't know what to do, and he was like, "Why don't you build websites? You already know HTML and you're very good at it. So just learn CSS, learn JavaScript, and you can start building front-end websites." So I. I saw new CSS properties, I started learning about them, and I've been doing it ever since. I had zero experience as a freelancer. I didn't know how everybody else did it. So I took a job for a very little amount of money. I mean, I was building kind of a Facebook app, and I was, I think they paid me $300 only for two weeks. Um, I, would, I would start working as soon as I woke up, before washing my face, I would jump out of bed, straight onto my laptop, start building till midnight. So that set the expectations wrong for my client because he thought that I would always be available for them. Um, they had this, like every couple of days, they would decide to change something about the design and then I would have to redo everything that I, uh, that I had built before. I got red eyes, I got uh, my nose started bleeding, my back was destroyed. So physically, I was a complete mess and I didn't make enough money out of it. So at some point I had to quit. So yeah, I learned not to, not to charge little. I have to learn how to charge to ask for a fair cost. I have to learn to set my expectations straight and to set the expectations of my clients straight, uh, restrict the number of hours per day that I work. And so generally everything that I should know about freelancing, I learned from that gig. How do I become a good developer? The, on, the only answer is you have to build things. So I was using Windows 8 at that time, and it has these 3D animations. And at some point, at, I looked at the animations and I was like, I should be able, this is literally what I thought, I should be able to recreate these using CSS3 animations. So I decided to give it a go. Uh, I did it, and then uh, usually when I'm learning something new, I research a lot, I read a lot, and then I take notes a lot. And at some point, I decided that I wanted to turn those notes into an article. So I created a blog. I didn't have a blog before that. I published that article, and it got more than 20,000 views in three weeks. That was, like, amazing. Uh, but the turning point for me, I think, was when I got interested in CSS shapes. And there was nobody else writing about CSS shapes at that point, except maybe there was a couple of articles on Adobe, because Adobe made CSS shapes. So I started getting interested. I, uh, I got introduced, I introduced myself to a couple of people who worked for Adobe. I started asking them questions. And again, I started taking a lot of notes as I was learning. So I remember I got an, um, an invitation from, uh, from some, one of the organizers of Future of Web Design, which is a conference that has been discontinued now. She asked me as if I would be willing to go and give a talk about CSS shapes in London. Uh, my first reaction was no, no way. Uh, but then everyone I know was like, why? You don't have anything to lose, right? So a month after that, I applied for the CFP for um, CSS Conf in the US. Uh, I, applied, I applied for three different talk topics and they were all accepted. And ever since then, I remember Paul Irish, he's one of my favorite people in the community. He, t uh, he talked to me after my talk and he said that um, people will want me to speak more. You never know how useful your article is going to be. You literally never know. And I know that a lot of people want to write, but they're always intimidated. They're always worried, like, what if people like it? What if not? So my idea was, don't, don't care about that. Don't think about that. Sharing your knowledge, in my opinion, brings you customers because how else are people going to know what you're good at if you don't tell them? And sharing your knowledge about a particular topic 
is you essentially telling them that you are knowledgeable about that topic. You may not be the best expert, but you're probably confident enough to share what you know, otherwise you wouldn't be sharing it. And then you've put what you know out there, and there are people out there who, s who see what you're putting out there. And maybe, maybe a client would be like, um, her knowledge would complement our team's knowledge very well, so she could be a great fit for our team. Or maybe um, our team is good, but we need someone to lead us, someone who is a little bit more knowledgeable than us. I think that's what contributes the most. Like you tell people what you're good at, and it's, it's literally like selling your, your skills like that. Don't get overwhelmed by what everybody else is doing. Just because React is famous doesn't mean that you should learn React. Just because Vue is, everybody's learning Vue or talking about Vue doesn't mean that you should learn Vue. Learn the fundamentals first. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, maybe probably SVG as well, but you don't have to dig deep into SVG. Just whatever you need in order to use it for icons, for example. Learn the basics. Once you learn how JavaScript works, then you can start picking whatever framework works for you. And only, this is what I personally do, I only introduce new tools into my workflow if they bring value to what I'm trying to do. If I don't need a framework, I don't learn it. And the best way to learn is to actually start doing things, start building things. Maybe see a design on Dribbble or on any other website and try to recreate it on your own. And that's how you learn. I'm proud of my speaking because it has helped me hopefully change the way people perceive Muslim women like myself. And I'm also proud of some of my client projects, particularly those that like if I work on a project and that project is something that eventually helps people live healthier lives, for example, or improve people's lives, uh, I'm also proud of that. Mm -hmm.